I don't know about you, but I think there is no better smell than that of fresh, freshly baked bread. There's something about it that just makes you feel good inside. The smell of fresh bread is warm. It is inviting. And it makes you feel like you belong. And ever since mankind first learned how to grow and grind wheat, corn, and other grains, bread has fed, bread has nourished, and bread has sustained life. So it's only proper that in today's gospel message, Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. It only makes sense. Jesus feeds us. Jesus nourishes us. Jesus sustains. Jesus gives us life. And not merely life here in this world, but eternal life with him for all eternity. So now the events of today's gospel take place immediately after those from last week. And if you recall last week, well actually two weeks ago, Jesus had fed the crowd of over 5,000 people, and then he sent his disciples ahead of him in the boat to cross the lake. That was last week. When a strong wind arose and pushed against them out on the lake, Jesus walked across the water. Jesus got into the boat with his disciples, and he calmed the wind, and he brought them peace. And there Jesus revealed himself to be the very Christ of God. By walking across the windswept sea, he revealed that he was the master, the all-powerful master of all creation. You see, only Jesus has the power and the might to command nature, to rescue the disciples, and to rescue us. Rescue us from the sinful storm of our fallen humanity. And now today, Jesus and the disciples have reached the other shore, and the crowd continues to gather around them. They want to know more about this man, this miracle worker. They wonder how he arrived at the other side of the sea, because they knew he had not gotten into the boat with the other disciples. They had witnessed him healing, casting out demons. They had heard him teach and they had experienced for themselves how he was able to feed thousands of people with what seemed like nothing, just a few loaves of bread and a few fish. But while they may have been fascinated with Jesus and wanted to be with him, they were doing it for all the wrong reasons. They were doing it for themselves. They were thinking only about themselves and about life in this world and not life eternal. Again, from the gospel. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. You see, the things of this world, the things we all work so hard for, money, house, car, family, and even life itself, all of these things will, sadly, one day perish. They don't endure. They all fade away. It is only the things of God that last forever. And only the gifts that our Lord Jesus brings endure for all eternity. The people following Jesus were doing so because they merely wanted another free meal, another full belly. That's why he tells them, you are seeking me because you ate your fill of the loaves. The miracles that Jesus performed, you see, were not done to simply make life easier for those following him. Instead, these signs were done so that people could realize and see exactly who this man Jesus was. Not just another faith healer, not just another teacher or rabbi, 
who would be popular for a short time and then fade away. No, Jesus performed these miracles, these signs, so that people would know that he truly was the Son of God, the promised Messiah, that he was the Christ. He had come to set these people free from the bondage of sin that had enslaved them ever since Satan tempted Eve back in the garden. Jesus, God's son and Mary's son, came to feed the people with something that would nourish and sustain them for eternity. Jesus, the true bread from heaven, came to give hungry sinners life everlasting. By his death on the cross, Jesus would release humanity from Satan's deadly hold on them. The Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world so that he could fill the people with forgiveness, with his righteousness, and he would fill them so that they would hunger no more. Now, like the people who crowded around Jesus those many years ago, we too can easily become focused on the passing things of this world and not on the eternal things of God. Have you ever been hungry? And instead of eating something filling and sustaining, something like a good piece of whole grain bread, decided to eat something sweet and indulgent? something more like a brightly colored box of candy. You see, while it tastes sweet and delicious when you take that first bite, the candy doesn't truly satisfy your hunger. As you know, a few minutes later, you just want more. And this is also true of the sinful and tempting delights of the world. Because of our sinfulness, we are easily distracted by their brightly colored promises and their momentary pleasures. We find ourselves feasting upon them, but they cannot supply us with what we so desperately need. And I'm sorry, Snickers, you do not truly satisfy. You simply leave us hungering for more. More sweets, more money, more success, more momentary pleasures. No, to be truly satisfied, to truly put an end to your hunger and thirst, your hunger and thirst for righteousness, one must be fed with something more than what this world can offer or what we poor miserable sinners can create by our own hands. We need something eternal. We need the bread of life. We need Jesus. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus, the true bread from heaven, comes to give us hungry sinners life everlasting. He comes to fill us, fill us with his love, with his forgiveness, and with his righteousness, so that with him we hunger and thirst no more. In our baptisms, we were baked into this very bread of life. And it was there by the Holy Spirit working through word and water that we were united into Jesus himself and made children of God. That's right out of Romans chapter 6. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The beauty of baptism, the beauty of being part of Jesus, the beauty of being part of his body, the church, 
through the ongoing work of the church, through the right proclamation of his word and the right administration of his sacraments. We are continually fed and nourished. So if this day finds you hungering and thirsting for something, for peace, maybe for security, for something that you cannot and will not find out there in the world, then you're here in the right place. Because it is here in church, in the boat with Jesus, here where he is truly present in his word and his sacraments, here you are touched. The word touches your ears and your heart, the sacrament, your lips. You are fed and you are forgiven. And now, filled with strengthened hearts, filled with hearty souls, we can all return to the stormy wind and world out there. We can return to that world emboldened and we can share his light, his love, his peace with our friends, our family, and those we meet, yes, even our enemies. So it is true. I honestly believe there is nothing quite as wonderful as the smell of freshly baked bread. It is warm, it is inviting, and it makes one feel like they belong. And ever since mankind first learned how to grow and grind wheat and other grains, it is bread that has fed us and given us life. And today, Jesus, the very bread of life come down from heaven, feeds us, feeds you, nourishes us, nourishes you, gives us and gives you life. Jesus, the true bread from heaven, comes to give all of us hungry sinners life everlasting. He comes to fill us with his forgiveness, his holiness, so that with him we hunger and thirst no more. In his most holy name, amen. <laughs>